This is the solutions video for the week three free response. <clears throat> so just looking at the table, it looks like I have block A attached to a string hung over a table with block B. So initially my first thought, whoops, goes to needing to use forces to probably help me solve this problem because this is a half at wood machine okay so pretty good idea of what I'm going to need to do okay with the pulley that means I also might need some rotation information depending upon if the pulley is massless or not so this problem explores how the relative masses of two blocks affect the acceleration of the blocks so remember, in this system, block A and block B, because they are attached, are going to have the same acceleration. And we can call that the acceleration of the system. So there is negligible friction, which means it is a frictionless surface, between block A and the tabletop. Block B of mass MB hangs from a light string that runs over a pulley and attaches to block A. The pulley has negligible mass and spins with negligible friction. So that means for now, we don't need to take into account any rotation of the pulley. And it says the blocks are released from rest. So this is saying suppose the mass of block A is much greater than the mass of block at B. So when it says much greater, they really mean much, much greater, like, I don't know, 10 times larger, okay? They want to know, or they want us to estimate the magnitude of the acceleration of the blocks after the release, okay? Well, remember that any object on Earth, if it is just simply falling, will have an acceleration of g. So if we're in free fall, which means we only have gravity, okay, our acceleration is going to be equal to g. And that kind of sets our maximum acceleration, okay, because none of these blocks have rocket boosters on them. So we shouldn't be seeing accelerations larger than 9.8, okay. We certainly can see accelerations much less than 9.8. So if block A is really, really, really big, so let's say that block A is 100 newtons in weight and block B is a tenth of a newton. So thinking really big differences in weight. Okay. If you think about it, there's no way that block B is going to be able to get block A started because block A has so much more mass. Remember, it has so much more inertia, which means it's going to take a relatively large force to get that large object to start moving. Okay? And an object in motion is going to or an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon. And same thing, an object at rest will remain at rest unless a force acts on it. Okay? So even though there is a force acting on it, we would probably expect the acceleration of that object to be very, very close to zero or very, very small. Okay? So you can write that very small, nearly zero. Okay? But one thing you can't say is you can't just say the acceleration is zero, okay? Because there is going to be a net force acting on block A, so it will have some acceleration, just a very, very small amount, okay? So briefly explain your reasoning without deriving or using equations. So we can say something like the net force acting on A is very small compared to the mass of A, which will lead to a small 
acceleration. Okay. Now it says without deriving equations, but I just want to show you the equation that I'm thinking of. So remember, we know from the reference table that the acceleration of the object is the net force over the mass. So if this net force is small and this mass is large, okay, you're dividing a small number by a large number, so that acceleration is going to be very small. Okay, And again, that was talking only about the acceleration of block A, okay, which would be the same as the acceleration of block B or the acceleration of the system. So now it says, suppose that block A is much less than the mass of block B. So let's go ahead and switch these. Let's say block A is 0 0.1 newtons and block B is 100 newtons. Okay. Now, when we have that sort of mass difference, it's probably pretty obvious to you that block A is going to fly across the table. But again, we have to estimate the magnitude. Okay? Now, saying very large or something like that actually wouldn't work in this situation because remember, we kind of have this boundary that we can only have a maximum of the acceleration due to gravity. We can't have an acceleration larger than that because there's no other external forces to cause that extra downward acceleration okay so for an acceleration for part two we could say very close oops close why aren't we writing very close there we go close to g okay or nearly g it's not going to be exactly g because we're still going to have that upward tension force, which is going to subtract from the force of gravity on block B. Okay? So we're not going to be exactly G, but that's why. So explain your reasoning without deriving or using equations. Okay? <coughs> so here we can talk about, again, um, the net force on B will be very close to the force of gravity acting on B with minimal minimal I think that's how you spell it. Tension. So the acceleration of B and the system will be nearly G. Okay. So let's see how we did. Let's see how we did for part A. So part A1 is worth two points. Okay. So we get one point for correct answer and an attempt at consistent justification. So that just means that you're not contradicting yourself within the problem. Like you're not saying that it's zero acceleration then a lot of acceleration. So I would say my answer is pretty consistent, so I definitely got that point. And then for correct reasoning. So let's look at the examples. Nearly zero because block A is much heavier than block B. I did mention something like that. Very small because block B has a large inertia, so it won't speed up much. Close to zero because block B is so light, it can hardly budge block A. So we need something that says the acceleration of the block is zero or near zero. The mass of block A is much greater than the mass of block B. See two-point examples above. So I did mention both of those things. So I got the two points. Yay! Now let's look at part B, A2. So correct answers for G or 9.8. So I did get that. So the examples, nearly G because block B is almost in free fall because block A is negligible mass and the tension of the string is nearly zero. So I did get that point as well. All right, so now we have B. So now suppose that neither block is much greater than the other, so they're approximately the same 
um, not necessarily equal. The dots below represent block A and block B as indicated. On each dot, draw and label the forces. Notice how it says not components, not that we need to deal with any here. Exerted on that block after the release. Represent each force by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the dot. So block A is the one on the table, so I'm going to draw this dashed line to represent my surface. Okay. So block A, we have the force of gravity from the Earth on block A. Okay. And then because block A is on a surface, we also have a normal force. So a normal force from the table on A. Okay. Then we also have... Actually, I should probably make this a little bit smaller if I'm thinking magnitude-wise. And magnitude-wise, my Fn and Fg arrows would be approximately the same. Or they should be the same because there's no acceleration in the y direction. So this would be the force of tension of the string on A. Okay. Then we have block B. We have the force of tension of the string on B. And then we have the force of gravity of the earth on B, okay? And you'll notice that I made the force of gravity larger because I'm going to assume that block B is accelerating downwards, and in order for that to be true, the downward force needs to be larger than the upward force, okay? So just as a reminder, the tension forces here and here are going to be the same. They act as Newton's third law pairs between the string and the boxes. So those two are the same. And as I said before, the normal force and the force of gravity are equal, but those two, I remember, are not third law pairs. Okay, They're just equal because the net force is zero in the y direction. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is derive an equation for the acceleration of the blocks after the release in terms of m, a, m, b, and physical constants. So that means little g as appropriate. If you need to draw anything other than what you have, use, <coughs> or in part b, use your solution in the space below. Okay, so there are a few different ways where, that you can derive the equation depending upon what you are comfortable with, okay? So we can either think about draw, doing a net force equation for the system, okay? Or we can do net force equations for each of the masses and then combine from there. So I'll show you guys both ways. So the net force on the system. So these are all of the forces acting on block B and block A. So I'm going to say that the downward direction is positive. So this downward direction is positive, which means this force is negative and this tension force is positive. Okay. So we have the force of gravity of the earth on B minus the tension force of the string on B plus a tension force of the string on A is our total mass, so MA plus MB times the acceleration. Remember, the two tension forces are the same, so they can go away. Okay. Force of gravity of Earth on B can also be written as MBG. So MA plus MB A. So I'm going to divide by that parenthesis. So I have MBG. M A plus M B equals A. Okay. One thing to pay attention to is the M B's do not cancel. They do not cancel. They do not cancel. So do not simplify this to G over M A. That is very, very wrong. Okay. So now doing net force equations for the two different masses. The only force acting on mass A is the tension in the string on A, okay, and FB has force of gravity of the earth on B minus the force of tension of the string on B, and BA, okay. Remember, the two tensions 
are the same. Okay? So if I have an equation for the tension on A, I can substitute it in for wherever I see the tension on B. So that now looks like Fg earth on B minus MAA because I'm taking this part and substituting it in for Ft on B. Then BA, I'm going to add that to both sides. FGEB is MAA plus NBA. We can factor out an A. Okay. And remember that this side, the left side of the equation, just becomes MBG. And we divide just like we did earlier, and we get the same answer that we did before for the acceleration. So that would be the correct answer. Let's make sure I got points for the free body diagram and that equation. So I get one point for a normal force or table force. I have that. I get correct gravitational forces. I have both of those. And I have correct tension forces. Awesome. Okay. And then for C, um, I used, so there's two different ways to grade C. I used a separate second law. Yep. I combined equations and that was my answer. Or for the first system one, I did have that. I have that and I had that. So I got all of those points for C. All right. Now for D. Consider your scenario for part A, I, I, where the block of mass A is much less than the block of mass B. Does your equation for the acceleration of the blocks support from part C agree with your reasoning? Briefly explain by addressing why, according to your equation, the acceleration becomes or approaches a certain value when MA is much less than MB. So as a reminder, our acceleration equation is MBG over MA plus MB. So they're saying that MA is really, really small. So let's assign some numbers to this just to think about it. So let's say that MB is 100 and MA is 0 0.1. So the top of my equation becomes 100G over 100 plus 0.1. So that's 100G over 100.1. Well, these two can essentially cancel and leave me with G. So I would say that that matches pretty well with what I described in part AA, that my acceleration is going to approach G, the acceleration due to gravity. So now I have to explain why. Unfortunately, that number explanation isn't really going to be enough. Okay, so for D, I would have to say if mass A is much less than MB in my acceleration equation, the MB values could cancel as MA in the denominator, denominator is insignificant. MB values could cancel, leaving an acceleration of nearly G. Okay. So let's check and make sure I got all my points on that one. All right, so D. D is worth one point. So I don't get any uh, points for a correct answer of yes, but what's important to realize is that let's say you totally messed up your equation, you could still possibly get points for this uh, question, even if your equation is wrong, because if your equation is inconsistent with what you said. So for a valid reasoning that addresses the result in part C and the reasoning in part AA, we pretty much did that, okay? So my claim would be, yes, the equation for the acceleration of the block in part C agrees with. 
Um, the evidence is that A is much less than the mass of B. So why? So when mass A is much less than B, it can be neglected in the equation derived for C, given an acceleration of close to G as stated. So I said that. Hooray. Okay. So these would be um, kind of like the right, wrong answer. So if you had done something incorrectly previously, okay, this would be how you would answer this. Okay, same with this. Okay. All right, and then the last part, because this is a very long question. So while the blocks are accelerating, the tension in the vertical position of the string is T1. Next, a pulley of negligible mass is replaced with a second pulley whose mass is not negligible. Okay, so if my pulley mass is not negligible, that means I have to take into account rotational effects. So I have to think about the torque on the pulley and things like that. When the blocks are accelerating in this scenario, the tension in the vertical string is T2. How do the two tensions compare to each other? Okay. So it's essentially saying, how does the tension in the vertical string when the pulley is not negligible compared to the pulley in the string when the, or compared to the tension in the string when the pulley is negligible. So the best way to compare the tensions is to think about the accelerations of both systems. Okay, so let me draw out two pictures. Okay, the first one is where the pulley is negligible. So I'm not gonna include it on my picture. The second one is where the pulley does have some mass, okay? So as a reminder, our acceleration equation was based off of MGB over MB plus MA, okay? Now we were able to divide by this MB plus MA because it was the total mass of the system, okay? In our new equation, we're going to have to take into account some other things, and the top is going to change a little bit. The bottom is also going to change. The bottom is also going to change because it's going to look like MB plus MA plus the mass of the pulley, okay? Because we have more mass in the system, so our acceleration is actually going to be less, okay? So we're going to have less acceleration. Okay, now let's just focus in on this hanging block, okay? So the free body diagram for this hanging block looks like T1 and FG earth on B, okay? T1 because that's what it was labeled. And then in the second one, we have T2 and FG E B, okay? So initially, I remember everything accelerates at the same rate, my force equation for B looks like Fg, earth on B, minus T1 is MBA, okay? But I'm gonna draw this A a little bit bigger, and I'll show you why in a second. And then for the second one, my net force equation for block B looks really similar just we're dealing with T2, okay, and B, and then this is gonna be a little A, because remember, we're having more mass in the system, so we have less acceleration, okay? So if I solve each <coughs> for T1, FGE B minus MB big A is T1, so I'm subtracting by a pretty big number, which means T1's probably going to be small, okay? And then I have FG EB minus MB little a. So I'm subtracting by a small number, which means T2 is going to be a larger number because this FG is the same, okay? So if this acceleration is less, that means I'm subtracting by a smaller number. So that means T2 is going to be larger than T1, okay? So there is my answer. Now I have to briefly explain my reasoning, okay? So the reasoning why, E. So with A 
massive pulley, the acceleration of the system will oops, decrease. If the acceleration decreases, this means the upward or vertical tension has increased from the initial initial spelled that wrong scenario so we have more mass in our system which leads to more or less acceleration the only way to get less acceleration forces wise is if we increase that upward tension and subtract more from the force of gravity so we have less net force less acceleration so let's just make sure i got all my points there okay so I have two points for question E. Again, no points for selecting the correct answer, but I do get a point for saying that the acceleration is smaller, which I did. Doing so, any of the following consistent with the answer in selecting Newton's second law for B. So concluding that smaller acceleration implies that T2 is greater than T1. Concluding unchanged acceleration is... <clears throat> okay, so we were concluding that t2 has to be greater than t1 because we have a smaller acceleration so it's kind of like however you say the acceleration changes you might not get that first point but you could get the second point if it makes sense okay so we got both of those points and that is how you do this week's free response problem we'll be back next week